It's the final week for early voting in Georgia's closely watched Senate runoff elections. The deadline for the majority of counties is December 30th or 31st. Election day is January 5th. Republican incumbent Senators David Perdue and Kelly Leffler are defending their seats against Democrats John Ossoff and Reverend Raphael Warnock. The twin races will determine which party controls the chamber during President-elect Joe Biden's first term. The high-stakes races are shattering fundraising records. Filings from Christmas Eve show all four candidates raised a combined $340 million for their campaigns in the last quarter. Meanwhile, some Georgia Republicans are still questioning the results from the last election. Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger ordered a review of signatures on 15,000 absentee ballots in Cobb County. That's set to be completed sometime this week. For more, I want to bring in Republican strategist Janelle King. She is the co-founder of the nonprofit organization Speak Georgia and former deputy state director for Georgia's Republican Party. Uh, thank you so much for joining Joining us, uh, Democratic candidates John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock both raised upwards of $100 million over the past two months. Senators Leffler and Purdue raised $64 and $68 million, respectively. Does the grassroots enthusiasm Democrats are seeing present a challenge for Republicans? And do you think that fundraising is a good predictor when it comes to the outcome of the race? Great question. Thank you for having me. Well, to start, I do think that fundraising definitely plays a major role, but I don't know if it's a predictor of outcomes, considering the fact that around 80 percent of the donations coming from the Democratic Party are coming outside of Georgia. So these are people who can't vote anyway. Um, I think more than anything else, what it's showing is that when you have a party such as the Democratic Party that's raised um, close to 100, if not over $100 million between October and now, that says that, you know, the parties have changed. We know the Republican Party is no longer the party of the elites. We're now the party of the working class, and the Democratic Party seems to have taken all the elites. So, <laughs> so I think that the fundraising does show um, us or give us a snapshot as to what's happening, but I don't think that it's going to determine outcomes as of right now. I mean, of course, having ads on TV is good because everyone's stuck at home. But most importantly, I think it's the message that's going to be the winning, um, what's going to cause the, the need to win or lose. Yeah, that's a good point that there's so much focus on this runoff election from virtually everyone across the entire country. So you are you are seeing that outpouring of donations um, from all parts of the country. Um, now, I want to you know break this down. This is a kind of a complicated race. The larger question here is how did the general election impact these candidates? Did it? Yeah, so, I mean, it's certainly impacting the conversation, right, because we're still trying to determine what was the outcome of the general election. So I know that that, that definitely plays a role. But I think more than anything else, it's the messaging that's coming from both parties that um, is reflective of what's going to happen. Um, I know a lot of Republicans are, you know, confused as to why President Trump is not considered to be in office as of right now. Um, but I think that's because of the fact that we had a lot of, you know, irregularities and a lot of questions around the whole voting process. So um, I absolutely believe that the voting process is changing and that's changing around um, uh, the discussion around the voting process is definitely there. But I think both candidates um, on the Republican side are going to just kind of push forward and keep doing what they were doing the whole time. Um, on Thursday, a Fulton County judge rejected a lawsuit from the Republican National Committee and Georgia's GOP seeking to limit the hours of operation for ballot drop boxes. They're currently open 24-7 under video surveillance. Republicans wanted to see them close after normal business hours. We are still in the middle of a pandemic. Why are Georgia Republicans trying to make it harder for people to vote by mail? So that's the thing. So voting by mail was done without these drop boxes, and it was done just fine. Um, you, there's nothing that's stopping anyone from voting by mail, whether you have the boxes or not. I think the biggest conf confusion around these boxes is w whether or not they're necessary in this election. You know, the agreement, the original agreement that was made has the boxes being taken away on December 31st, which, which will be before this runoff election. And that was determined while we had 21 individuals in the race against Senator Leffler. So we knew there would be a runoff. So I know that the, while, while they're trying to paint a picture that there's some form of voter suppression taking place, that's not it at all. It's just that these, these drop boxes are just not serving a purpose at this time. I know that we're down um, by, t by a little over 20 percent. Um, as it relates to mail-in ballots coming in during this uh, runoff election in comparison to the general. So it's just not serving a purpose. But you know what, regardless whether people are using it or not, 
I think that, you know, the data is showing that people are voting in person during this election, and I think that's what's going to determine the end result. Yeah, there's been a huge turnout, um, you know, in, yeah. before Election Day, which has been, you know, really um, incredible to see. Now, uh, I should note, we are still in the middle of a pandemic. Georgia is among the states seeing a surge in coronavirus cases during the holidays. Much of the Democrats' campaign messaging has been focused on health care and the pandemic. Do you want to see the Republican candidates address this more? Is that something that resonates with the base? So uh, health care resonates with everyone. So, and I do believe that there is a good way to have this discussion. That does not mean we are completely doing away with private insurance companies or putting us all in a universal health system. I think there's a really educated way to have this discussion and find a balance to that. But I know that, that you know, the Republicans are just you, looking at this for what it is. And the truth of the matter is having a, a Democratic-controlled House, Senate, and White House is just problematic when you think about the threat that it will cause to our constitutional republic. I think at the end of the day, we need to make sure that we are voting for people and individuals who will create this balance that's necessary for us to maintain um, the, the patriotism that we've seen thus far. What should be the priority for Senators Purdue and Leffler in this final week of campaigning? I think they should just kind of double down on, you know, using the Democrats' words against them. You know, they haven't repeated anything that hasn't been said by the Democrats themselves, you know, between AOC and her not wanting to negotiate and to, to Warnock and his his statements around, you know, not being able to serve God and serve your country at the same time. I mean, there are, and then Schumer's statements, I mean, the list goes on and on. So I think if they continue to focus on utilizing the Democratic's wor Democratic uh, candidates' words against them in their own words, I think we'll be fine, because that's something that's not, that can't be disputed or rewritten in a, a ad or some type of uh, literature that's going out to, to, to our voters. But I think it's just focusing on what was said and who said it is, is what's going to be most important. Speaking of messaging going out to voters, this is a really interesting uh, little nugget that's been going on. Billboards around the state say Senators Leffler and Purdue did not fight for President Trump and therefore his supporters shouldn't vote for them in the runoffs. Reporting from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution found that a liberal po political action committee is actually behind those messages. Do Georgia Republicans have a unity problem that Democrats are trying to seize on here? And are you concerned that that could be that that could end up being a vulnerability in January? Well, I definitely think that we need to emphasize that the message that you're speaking of is coming from the Democratic side. It's not coming from the Republican side. And, and unity is a very interesting word, right? So I, I look at it like a, a family unit. We all are, are in our own families, and we all have disagreements and disputes and things that we just don't necessarily see as, um, you know, just agree on in general. However, at the end of the day, we all serve a common goal. And as Republicans, conservatives, whether you're a Trumplican or you're a Republican, at the end of the day, we all need each other in order to accomplish a common goal, which is to maintain patriotism and continue to have a state, a country, where we are able to win and achieve the American dream and be successful and protect ourselves without having the government tell us what to do. So I think that at the end of the day, we are all unified on our common goal, and that will be reflective in January. Um, but, you know, yes, families disagree. We have disagreements. It's normal. <laughs> With the confidence of the election being called into question, the general election, looking ahead, if either or both of the Republican incumbents were to lose their seat, do you think that Leffler and Purdue should follow the example that was set by the Trump campaign during the general election with regard to challenging the election results in court and demanding, demanding recounts? I think that both senators should exercise their constitutional rights. And if there is a reason to believe that something was done wrong or there's some form of irregularities, then absolutely they need to exercise their constitutional rights and, and do what's necessary to make sure that this is a fair election. But I, I'm hopeful that this will be a fair election. I, I, I'm not as excited um, about the outcome of the general because I do believe that there are some things that just seem a little shady, but, um, but I know that, that that's being all worked out. But most importantly, I care more so about, you know, making sure that we do have confidence restored in the election process so that we don't have to go through this, whether it be Democrats or Republicans. You know, this is this is for everyone. This is a bipartisan issue. And I just I'm, I'm sorry, a nonpartisan issue. And I think that it's important to make sure that people understand that and keep that the focus 
So yes, if, if there's some reason to believe that something was done wrong, then I absolutely expect them to utilize their constitutional rights. Now, we mentioned the audit of voter signatures in Cobb County from November. In major elections over the past four years, the rate of ballots rejected due to signature problems was somewhere between 0.1 and 0.4 percent. The results of this current audit will not change the outcome of the election. So why are Republicans pushing for it? Well, I don't know if we can determine with the information we have whether or not it would change the outcome. Um, but I will say that, you know, what Republicans are pushing for is integrity. And so a lot of that has to do with whether and what, regardless of whether they overturn this election or not, we want to feel like we are voting in a democracy that allows us to feel safe in doing so. And that's where the biggest problem comes in at. You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, when you really look at these signature audits, I do think that this is this is reflective of a process that needs to be looked into and maybe changed and addressed in a different way. Because when it comes to these signatures, even if we do find these irregularities, um, we can't point them back to a specific voter. And that's a problem, not so much for the federal level, because they can take things to the Supreme Court, they can take these cases to the state house legislators and things of that nature. But I think about the down ballot candidates who lost in certain districts by a small margin of voters. You know, so that's why this is really, really important, because it could be, um, it, even if whether it overturns the presidential results or not, it could overturn some of these down ballot results. So I think it's definitely necessary to keep looking into it and, uh, and making sure that we look for every small loophole so that we can change it and do better next time. Such a critical time in Georgia. Janelle King, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.